Greetings, Earthlings, Wisdom Keepers, Wisdom Seekers! Welcome back to Wisdom Drops, your source for daily drops of wisdom and savvy cat astrology. My name is Tanya, and today we are breaking down the eclipse that is happening on July 4th, 2020, which is also the solar return, aka birthday, of the United States. So stuff is about to go down, y'all. In this video, we are going to be discussing two primary uh, factual arrangements in the astrological heavens. Number one, there is an eclipse happening, and we're going to be talking about Sirius and the significance of Sirius, which if you don't know what that is, stay tuned. If you do, it's still going to be really interesting and relevant for you. And also another star, um, Lyra and Vega, that they're being activated through all this. And number two, we're going to be talking about the V sextile that's happening in the heavens at the time of this eclipse and the significance of that, which I have not heard a lot of other astrologers talking about. So I hope that, um, any actually I haven't heard them talking about. So I hope that that provides you an interesting take and a, uh, just a different way of interpreting the energy and maybe how to work with it for you a little bit better. As usual, the video talks about the collective in this experience, but more so particular to you as an individual and what you're going to be experiencing. I have done, uh, uh, six month forecast for all the signs and I'm in the process of finishing the rest so if you haven't seen it posted yet on the channel be sure to subscribe at the bell notification because I will be putting out more videos for the sign in the coming days okay each of the signs and before last caveat before I jump into the vid is if you want a reading with me I am available for readings if you decide that you like my style you like how I really break things down and go deep into everything and see all the connections go ahead and reach out to me at wisdomdropsallzs at gmail.com I'm happy to discuss your chart with you I absolutely love providing people that kind of value and insight so do reach out it's down below if you want the um, you know exact words written out for how to get in touch with me now as I said we're moving into two different things in relation to this eclipse number one it is happening on a very and I do mean very I'm not hyping this up it's real the hype is really all spiritual star and that is serious if you're not familiar with serious buddy are you in for a fun little nugget of information this is like literally gold Sirius is the center of the Sun's rotational uh, you know uh, path throughout the heavens so our Sun is the center of our little solar system all of our planets are going around the Sun right but the Sun itself check it out is in a binary system with another star which it is circulating around and that is Sirius and Sirius is seriously divine because it is the highest apex of spiritual evolution it's said that the ascended masters who have come to earth have incarnated uh, from uh, Sirius or have been in some way previously incarnated in Sirius. The people who make the biggest impact of good and benevolence usually have some serious connection um, in their chart. You could even find that, I'm sure. Uh, you know, I don't know people to list off of the top of my head other than Leonardo da Vinci. His south node was on Sirius, ironically. Not ironically, but you know, point being. So moving forward though, um, Sirius is where the most benevolent spiritual teachers of our universe are. It's where the sun itself and the sun in astrology is associated with God. It's associated with the higher consciousness what is good and true in the universe so if that luminary is circulating around this luminary which is even brighter than the Sun several times brighter than our Sun what does that tell you about Sirius you see what I'm saying you see my point also, uh, the people or entities, we should say, who come from Sirius, who originate and live there, they have only benevolent intentions for Earth. They only want to nurture. They only want to love. They're not here to harm. They don't have any shady undertones. It's literally like the most beautiful spiritual energy and force. It's kind of like the God of God is at Sirius. So the Egyptians also revered highly Sirius and have several period con pyramid configurations that align with that. Interestingly enough, for those of us who are interested in that type of stuff but check it out this is what's really cool about this is that this eclipse the Sun itself is on Sirius the most spiritual center of our entire galaxy as we understand it Sirius is where the Sun is actually at at 13 degrees of cancer at the time of this eclipse happening on July 4th so what's the significance of that the Sun as I said is divine consciousness it's spirit it's God and when the Sun itself is on the point of Sirius which is the God of God in ancient astrology and ancient understanding of the ancient world, right? That means that our collective consciousness, our individual consciousness, is being lit up like a Christmas tree to have what I'm identifying as a moral reckoning, okay? Because the moon is in opposition, it's a full moon, okay, eclipse on July 4th that we're experiencing. And that means that something for those of us who already know the astrological, you know, uh, consciousness, nomenclature, whatever, a full moon is when something is coming to fruition. A full moon is something that is coming vividly uh, apparent. In this case, you know, the sun is illuminating 
the moon and therefore it is uh, the collective consciousness being awakened to something. You can't deny a full moon when you look up in the night sky. You see my point? So with that said, we are going to be going through a moral reckoning, a moral revival. And this is something that has been in process on planet Earth for who knows how long. But why do I say that? Because it is, yes, a full moon and yes, the sun itself, God in astrology itself, is on Sirius, the most spiritual badass star of healers and divine sources of love and light, okay? And the moon is in opposition being illuminated by this. In this case, the moon is conjunct uh, Lyra and Vega, okay? That's like some intense star energy that, depending on different sources that you read, it has a lot of mixed energies around it. So in some ways, Lyra and Vega symbolize more of a, a lush, lavish, pretentious lifestyle. In other ways, people say it's actually a source of higher knowledge and uh, when in conjunction, depending on the sources you check out, with Saturn, or making a strong aspect to Saturn, uh, those points are actually indicative of a huge manipulator. People who are um, very good talkers but highly manipulative and are looking to basically um, take down the consciousness of society and of the collective because, you know, they're in it for their own uh, selfish gain. They're not in it for the collective well-being and the collective good, but they're very smooth talking. They're very charismatic. That's what those points in Capricorn symbolize. Now check it out, check it out, check it out. If you didn't already know, now you know Saturn at the time of this eclipse has fresh retrograded back in from Aquarius to Capricorn which guess what by ancient standards of astrology that's a conjunction by sign okay because Lyra and Vega are in Capricorn and Saturn has just freshly retrograded back into Capricorn at the tail end degrees so we have a Saturn conjunction why is this a divine reckoning it's a divine reckoning it's a moral revival because Sirius itself God itself is at uh, you know, the serious point. It's being illuminated by our consciousness. And the moon is over here receiving the light of that very purifying uh, sun. And it's almost, in my humble opinion, as your astrologer interpreter of the day, it's purifying the moon. It's purifying the collective consciousness, which is moon energy, right? It's purifying the emotional manipulation that has happened. Lyra and Vega at a lower vibe, right? It's purifying that. And it's, it's giving it that, um, that moral, you know, a revival that it needs. So there's that. And that's something that I think that we're going to be seeing over the next six months, if not immediately, uh, this July 4th, 2020, we're going to be seeing that play out over the next six months. Now, the other thing I told you I wanted to talk about is the V sextile arrangement happening in the sky. If you don't know what a V sextile is, some astrologers refer to it as a mini grand trine. And what that really means is that there's one trine being made between two planets, which those two planets are sextiling another planet that is at the apex of a little blue triangle, which is a creation of two sextiles and a trine again. And what does that mean? That means that usually in astrology world, we interpret that as the apex of that little triangle has a point. And this is a definitive, um, there's a reason for this energy to be together. It's almost as if to say that, you know, we've experienced growth and we have skills in these areas. And that's why we see this little triangle. And that in order, because we see that we're, in, we're supposed to apply it towards something because we've been given that gift, we have to apply it towards towards something and the thing that we're going towards is generally speaking the apex of that little triangle and the apex in this instance is Mars and it's sending out sextile energies to Venus in Gemini and Saturn in Capricorn and so Venus and Saturn are connected by a trine energy and um, the apex of this you know Mars is sending out a sextile energy okay to the other twos so what does that mean well check it out Mars and Aries is symbolic of the individual it's symbolic of young people in this world it's symbolic of warriors in this world fighters in this world okay people who stand up for something Aries in this world okay that's who that is so a lot of astrologers have been looking around like you know I'm kind of antsy that Civil War is about to pop off because this squaring between Mars and Saturn you know but check it out at the time of the Eclipse which is the imprint it's like God's blueprint for the next six months uh, on society okay it's in a it's in a sextile it's in a positive aspect to saturn and i see this as the people waking up to our independence the people waking up to what we're standing up for the people especially the young people waking up to what it is we need to stand for as a society because this is a moral revival this is a, a reckoning you know that is happening with sirius involved at this degree i'm literally getting goosebumps just thinking about it can you see all them goosebumps because sirius is real it's literally high vibe energy do some research yourself you know what i'm saying but 
with that said, I think that that's what we're going to be seeing. And also that worth, because Venus and, uh, you know, Venus is talking with Saturn, and those two are actually friends in ancient astrology, okay? But they have to do with worth. Both of them are about value. Venus is more monetary value. Saturn is the kind of value that you earn over time, reputation, accomplishment, pride that you know that you can have because it's grounded and it's from a real long, uh, you know, experience of energies. Oh no! Some, there was a little bug on my ankle, and I hope it wasn't a good bug that I swished off and hurt, but I don't see them, so it's okay. Moving forward, uh, you know, with that said, I think that we're going to be seeing a lot of fresh energy in our lives over the next six months, ending this two-year cycle of kind of like hell and just like negative experiences that we've had as a society, as a collective. And, you know, I just want to make sure that you as a viewer of this understand that uh, you have the power to connect with a higher benevolent force at any given time. And under this eclipse, it is very volatile, intense energy. Don't get me wrong. There's a lot of other hard aspects happening. But I encourage you all to be more receptive on July 4th. I would not go out on July 4th. I'm not going out on July 4th. I think that um, there's a lot of volatile energy that could really go off and explode and kind of just... I wouldn't be near fireworks personally on July 4th this year, 2020. I wouldn't do it if it was me. I don't mean to scare anybody, but if you are, you know, going out, you have plans and you feel your soul it's like a good thing for you it's divinely guided cool have fun man be safe but be careful around fireworks that's all i gotta say uh you know uh do check out those other vids for the sign by sign again if you want a reading it's wisdom drops at gmail.com all z's and with that said my friend like the video subscribe hit the bell all that jazz all that jazz and until next time and through next time may the stars be with you peace